Blog Talk Radio. Well, good night. Good evening. Good day. Grand Rising, Sam. I will um, start by saying this is the Crown Talking Drums radio station. I am the host of the rise of the dry bones. This has been in full effect since 2016. I have seen the rise of Israel, of the dry bones. I keep seeing things It's hard to see things past a certain point for me as of late. I have no fear of that. And I take comfort in it. Because the glory is what is to come. This world is full of madness. People in it who still will not consider who we are and whose we are are struggling right now. They are likened to Egypt prior to the plagues coming. They didn't consider, they care, they still kept us in bondage. And when Moses said, let my people go to Pharaoh so that they, his people, we, may worship our God, Pharaoh said, no, same thing. Let We're saying it to these people. We're saying it to, to this world. Let us go so that we can worship our God. No, you all are crazy. You guys don't have a God. You guys are useless. You guys are anti who you are, anti-Semitic. You guys are foolish. And we're saying, but let us go so we may worship our father. And they keep saying no. And they're giving us all the excuses in the book as to why we shouldn't go. Don't you want to steal where these Nikes? Don't you want to steal where these Adidas? Don't you want to listen to this music? Don't you want to go out and eat? Don't you want to have this pork sandwich? Don't you want to be entertained by our world? And we keep saying, let us go so that we can worship our Father. And they are just chomping at the bit, falling over themselves to try to tell us that we are perverting our word, when in fact they have perverted our word since they stole it. So I know we're tired. I know the Father knows we're tired, but we must endure further. Because we all want to see the look on their face. We all want to be entertained by this butt whipping that the Father is is bringing, has brought, and will bring more of. And the sad part about it is all they really have to do is consider. That's the sad part. I think I feel like the father would take it from there if they will consider. But they won't. And and I just believe they can't. That's why, you know, they're pump, they're pumping up this this fella as time man of the year. I mean, but you know, even that is 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 pure ignorance cuz they had they had Bruce Jenner as woman of the year. I mean, you know, this is the world that we live in. And to be honest with you, I, I don't I don't care about it anymore. It's not to say that, you know, 
I don't care about who I am. Um, I just don't care about my place in it anymore. It used to be where I cared about my place. I wanted to be, I wanted to find the success that I saw in the world. And, you know, for the most part, the Father has allowed me to have some success in this world. But what he's also done is shown me that the success in the kingdom to come is greater than the success in this world. And he asked me to make a choice. And I think that I chose properly. You know? And when we see these things that are happening amongst the mentally retarded, heathen Gentiles, we have to also consider our own place in this world. So just like I said, you know, when they were, when when Pharaoh was saying no to Moses and, you know, Moses was saying, you know, Moses didn't go to him and be like, listen, let me just explain this to you. This is why. No, he kept saying the same thing. Let my people go so that they may worship their Elohim. And Pharaoh kept saying no. And all he kept saying was the same thing. See, that's where we are. We're the Pharaoh. I mean, we're, we're, we're the Moseses going up against these Gentile heathen Pharaohs who want to make a, 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 a man a woman and a woman a man and make that some sort of, some sort of um, heroic, um, heroic charge or heroic feat. And the irony in it is that I guess it's I guess you gotta be some some sort of person to cut your jang off. Some sort of person to tell the most high that, you know, he made a mistake. Now listen, I would I will I will say this, that if the father chose to make you a degenerate, then yeah, I mean, it makes sense that you're going to be a degenerate and you're going to go all the way in this time. You're going to go 100% left at this point, at this moment in time. If that was your predestination to be a degenerate, to be a reprobate. So, you know, I ain't mad at them, meaning those people. I'm not mad at them. But shoot, that's their thing. That's their That's their issue. Again, I know my place. My place is not to sit here and worry about them or even consider or even deal with them. That's not where we are. We're so far past all of this. Like, this is so meaningless. And everybody, you know, people, well, you got to meet the people where they are. You got to go. No, 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 we don't. No, we don't. We need to meet ourselves where we want. We need to be where we want to be. If we start going down and meeting people where they are, shoot, we get caught up. You know, somebody out there shooting and killing, and you want to go down out there and be like, hey, listen, you know, you can't be shooting and killing. What's going to happen? You're going to be killed. This is the folly of how this world has uh, indoctrinated us to believe it to be. This is a wicked, wicked world. And we were part of it at one point. And it's like I, I, I've been asking the Father to, to show me, give me information, confirmation, knowledge, and wisdom on America being uh, the ten tribes being in America, and you know, I I, I did two searches. I'm just going to say it. I did two searches, and the first search I did, I kind of um, I kind of missed. I transposed a word, so it didn't come out right. But the next search I did, I got Aserat, America, home of the Israelites. And, you know, I had to save it and I had to print it out. Because I don't know how long this information is going to be up there. You know, this is this is what we need. We need to be seeking what we need to be seeking. We don't need to be worrying about their demise or their dysfunction 
or their uh, degradation. That's their issue. These people are done. And listen, I, I got two. I got this is my old Smokey and the Bandit. That's that's telling my age, but this is my old Smokey and the Bandit. I got a long way to go and a short time to get there. And the last thing I'm gonna be doing is worrying about who shot the sheriff, because I don't care. I really don't. I'm here to, or I should say, the Father has put me here to bring forth information and enlightenment to the nation, our nation, not their nation, our nation, because our light, well, you know, we've done that before. We went, we've, uh, you know, I, I know I have, I've gone out and I've tried to show these people these scriptures and I tried to show them me in these scriptures. And each time I did that, all they did was scoff. So now I'm done showing them anything. Like, I I don't – black, white, Puerto Rican, Haitian, doesn't matter who they think they are. If they are not of Israel, I'm not, I'm not entertaining their inadequacy. Sure, you know, if someone comes my way and they um, seem a degenerate and uh, I can – and uh, and the spirit says and help them then I will without a doubt but I'm not making it my task or my charge to be bothered I'm not I'm done with that I'm too old for that you know I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired I'm too old for that plus all that does is sap my energy Lessen my spirit. It, it it weakens my frequency, and I got enough to deal with uh, in this day to day, in my day to day living and dealing with what I deal with day to day, than to allow the ignorant world and its folly me to give my energy away to that. It's like. Like, I look on TV this evening, and, and I don't even know why I did it, but I, I just did. I, I, it was on, and I looked, and it had this these these women who had these big lips, and they were, and I'm going, I'm, I, I keep, the, I, and I was thinking to myself, man, if that's not, if that's not hypocrisy in, at its finest, where these European women are now looking to have big lips, when, shoot, in my lifetime, 50 years ago, they were ridic- we, we were ridiculed, ridiculed for having large lips. Same with the butt. Same with the boobs. Same with the hair. Same with the feet. Everything. Everything about us was ridiculed. And for some reason, I look, I look at the tell a la vision, and it's showing European women with big lips and big butts. And I'm going, see, Father, they cannot be us. And and and, and, I, and I, like, Father, please show them their error. They understand that they will never be us. It's just like the issues. They run around, they talk about, you know, for, you get, can't forget the whole Holocaust and all this madness. And yet, and this ain't got nothing to do with me being anti-me, anti-Semitic, because that's folly. It's a whole other conversation, which we all know, but that's another conversation. But this has to do with reality. Reality is that these people have been getting their reparations now for a long time, constant, like perpetual money, perpetual success, perpetual ownership for a long time now. And then when I, me, any one of us bring up slavery, they want us to forget, but they don't want us to forget their plight, their fake plight, for whatever that may mean. 
because I can I can rest assured, I can fully say that their plight is no, is not even one percent of the plight that my people had to go had to endure and persevere through. Not one percent. And see, for me, I'm just saying, you know, at the end of the day, why, why do I care about anybody else's plight but mine? Because nobody else cares about mine. So if nobody else cares about mine, then at the very least, I have to care about it. And see, that's the difference now. For a long time, we didn't really care about our plight. We were trying to run away from our plight. We never embraced our plight. We didn't. We we were told to forget about our plight. We were told to uh, embrace the Anglo uh, European ideology and 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 look and 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 ideas and and beliefs as we got rid of ours. And for a long time, that worked. That worked. But then the father came through, came through in a pinch, and said, nah, 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 wake up. Wake up. Take the pillow from your head and put a book by it. Wake up. Do you see me? Do you hear me? to make a decision, are you with me or not? And for the mass majority of us, we chose him. And as we made that choice, the whole world fell into great darkness. So let's get at it because i got to read this again. This is a, a rehash from last week. And this is second Baruch. I'm going to do 20, what is this, 24, 25, through 30. And he answered and said unto me, you too shall be preserved till that time, till that sign, which the Most High will work for the inhabitants of the earth in the end of days. This, therefore, shall be the sign. This, therefore, shall be the sign. When a stupor shall seize the inhabitants of the earth, and they shall fall into many tribulations. Hold up. Stupor. You know, I mean, I'm emphasizing stupor. I mean, Zelensky as the man of the year. This dude has just taken money, hand over fist, taken money from us. I mean, they can't even, they can't even say... All right, we'll just forego all the student loans because, you know, it was a racket from the get-go, and we put you all in perpetual slavery with debt. But we'll, we, we, we won't even – they won't do away with that. That's got to go to the Supreme Court to wonder, you know, should we give these people a break or not, even though we're U.S. citizens. But yet at the same – and then you got some of the – this is how ignorant our, our country is. Then you got some of our citizens talking about, well, I did it, and, and you, 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 you should do it. This shouldn't be – it's like, come on, man. We're in a totally different time. These de- the debt that, that, that has been handcuffed and shackled to the people need to be released. It needs to go away. But they don't want to. But yet they'll give Zelensky $80 billion. $80 billion. And again, there's 360, give or take, million people in America. $1 billion would have satisfied all of us. One. Billion, they could have given that fool seventy billion, but given us one billion, but they didn't. And where was the church leaders talking about? You can't be doing that. No, they they took they they broke bread to the church leaders to be quiet. This is why the father has to come. This is why he's bringing this judgment. This is why we can emphatically say. 
we are living in a stupor of time where these people are running around drunk. A drunk man to say, you know, I'm hammered, but shoot, I'm going to get in this car anyway. That's a that's stupid and a stupor. But yet, you know, the world don't see no problem with that, which is weird to me. It don't see no problem with that, which is weird to me. And they shall fall into many tribulations. You don't see all this tribulation going on out here? And again, when they shall fall in great torment. See, this is what's coming next, this torment. They will be tormented. Why? Because the witnesses will start to torment them. That is us. We are tormenting their soul right now by just learning who we are, by just saying, nah, nah, nah. We are the aboriginal Americans. We are the 12 tribes of Israel. Those fake folks are acting like they have a um, – that they can only have the creator, God. And then those ignorant folks, the Christians, they say only they can have Jesus. It's so funny. The issues take God, and the Christians take Jesus. And guess what the Israelites take? We take we take wisdom. We take the Holy Spirit. We take her back, in which then we get the Father and the Son. See, they don't even, they don't, <laughs> just ridiculous. They don't even recognize that you have to have the Spirit in order to even recognize the Father and the Son. So when we acknowledge our error, repented of our forefathers, changed our ways, our mama came back and said, I'm here. When our mama came back, our daddy said, what? They back? My prodigal sons and daughters are back? And then our brother was like, our big brother was like, yo, they back. And then all our family was rejoicing. Because we've been in the wilderness of the even Gentiles for so long, for so long. We've been in that that stupor. It was us that was running around drunk in a stupor, hating ourselves, mistreating ourselves, mistreating our families mistreating our bodies, our minds, our soul, mistreating our father, mistreating our brother, mistreating our mother. And now that we've come full circle and we're saying we're done with that, now these heathen Gentiles out here are running around going, you 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 you, you guys can't can't get leave us. You, you you just can't leave us like this. And we're saying so, so sorry, so sad, too bad. And look at them, leaderless in a great stupor. And it will come to pass when they say in their thoughts, by reason of their much tribulation, the mighty one doth no longer remember the earth. Yes, it will come to pass when they abandon hope that the time will then awake. Has that not been occurring? Is that not occurring? Has that not already occurred? They didn't have no hope. When they were in their blessing before 2019, they were YOLO. They were we, we, we. Remember now, before 2019, they were were so busy trying to be um, a woman as a man and a man as a woman that they didn't care about the father. They didn't care about the son. They didn't care about the spirit. The righteous see? They didn't care about that. They were too busy in their glory, in their in their glory of wickedness. And I answered and said, Will that tribulation which is to be continue a long time? 
And will that necessity embrace many years? That's interesting. It's a good question. And he answered, and he said unto me, into 12 parts is that time divided. Now, these 12 parts, I read last week, but this time I'm going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to ask some questions. Into 12 parts is that time divided, and each one of them is reserved for that which is appointed for it. So all this stuff was ordained. That's why we know who we are. That's why everything is happening because we know who we are because it was reserved for that which is appointed for it. So in the first part, there shall be the beginning of commotions. Has there not already been the beginning of commotions? Has that not already happened? Commotion and confusion and confounding can this earth take? Has that not already happened? And in the second part, there shall be slayings of the great ones. Have they not been killing our people, killing the righteous people? Have they not? Have they not just ran around with their espionage and their assassins and their ninjas, and they just been killing, taking people out who went against their wicked narratives? Has that not already happened? And in the third part, the fall of many by death. Has not many been destroyed on this? I mean, the 20th century, I mean, goodness gracious, great balls of fire. I mean, all centuries had a lot, but I mean, I don't. I don't, I mean, goodness gracious, last century there was a ton. The century before that it was a ton. I mean, how many, I mean, yes, and the, and in the third part, the fall of many by death. And in the fourth part, the sending of the sword. Times that they sent out, we need to bring Iraq freedom. We need to go over here and do some killing. We need Freedom! We got to give. We we got to do some killing for our policy. How many brown people around this earth, over the course of their rulership, have they killed by the sword? This has already occurred. And in the fifth part, famine and the withholding of rent. I mean, I don't. I mean, we know. the famine's all over. So famines, that is already happening. I'm, I'm breaking this down to show you that these things are already happening to get to the point, okay? And in the sixth part, earthquakes and tears. Is all that not happening? And this wanting, the lacking of, has that not happened? Has there been a lack? I mean, the depression, <clears throat> excuse me, the depression, the wars, there's been a lot of people lacking or wanting and in the eighth part, a multitude of specters and attacks of the Shadim. Excuse me. Shadim are spirits or demons in the Tanakh and Jewish mythology. However, they are not necessarily equivalent to the modern connotation of demons as evil. See, that's that BS. That's that, that foolery. Uh, there, it says, are spirits or demons but not necessarily equivalent to the modern connotation, the modern thought of demons as evil. So that's that, that, that's that double talk. That's that stupor, right? So let's go back. And in the eighth part, a multi, multitude, multitude of specters, and attacks of the Shadim. So the demons are going to be, is that not happening now? Has that not been occurring over the last four or five years in great, in, like in droves? And in the ninth part, the fall of five. Has not, have they not been blowing, dropping bombs and dropping, have they not been blowing stuff up? And in the tenth part, rapine and much oppression. I mean, that's all these people do. This is all they've done is oppress. Shoot, they 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 have oppressed so many beings, so many humans that they don't even care the age. They 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 want to oppress the children. This is why the father. This is how you know that the father is close to putting his hands on these his fit 
in the mouth and the in the in the chest and the neck of these people because they have no they they are so degenerate that they are in our face and in our face raping our children raping them just like they've done us they rape they rape they rape and for some strange reason fools is out here thinking no that can't be no no that doesn't that no no that doesn't that doesn't matter what? Just sick. And in the eleventh part, wickedness and unchastity are not is is not people, men and women, just whoring themselves right now. It's it's interesting because you know, in a in a in a world where you have so much, and so they say so much opportunity, in a world of of marred of capitalism, the only thing a person feels, a person is oppressed so much that a person feels that all they have left is to sell themselves. This is this is this world. This is this world. Unchastity. Okay? And in the 12th part, confusion. Now watch this. Because this, this, because it was asked, well, what, 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 you know, what, what woe do you think we're in? And I said, well, we're in the 12th woe, of course, without a doubt. No doubt about it. Like, it is, I have no doubt that we're in this 12th woe. Now, watch this. And in the 12th part, confusion from the mingling together of all those things aforesaid. For these parts of that time are reserved and shall be mingled one with another and minister one to another. For some shall leave out some of their own and receive in its stead from others, and some complete their own and that of others, so that those may not understand who are upon the earth in those days that this is the consummation or completion of the times. Now, the mingling together of all those things said before, aforesaid, okay, before, okay, which is everything from the first down to the 11th woe. So right now, today, in our world, right now, right now, in December 7th, 2022, the day that lives in infamy, okay? They are creating commotions. They're still killing great men and women. Many are falling by death. What is it? Uh, Early death, something, something. People just falling out from taking a jab. They still sinning, they still warring, that's sinning of the sore. There's lots of famine and withholding of rain, but there's a lot of rain, but there's still a lot of famine and withholding of rain. There's definitely earthquakes and terrors. There's definitely people that are lacking. There's most certainly multitude of specters and, and, and demon attacks. You just look at the way people are. I mean, Biden, for one, that fool, look at him. Look at Pelosi. Look at how they lie. Look at how much they lie. If they lie the way that they lie, the lot to lie, you know that they are possessed by demons because only demons love the lie. And fall of fire, they Putin dropping bombs, fire bombs on fools right now as we speak. Rapine and much oppression. Let me go. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me do this. So, rapine and much oppression. So, oppression. We all know what that word means. Rapine. You may think that that means rape, but no. What does that mean? Let me put my eyeglasses back on. What does that mean? That means 
the violent seizure of someone's property, the fruits of violence and raping. I mean, look at Ish. Ish over there, they seizing property as we speak. The violent seizure is, is it, I mean, this, this, this land of milk and honey has been violently seized. They still season lands all over the earth. Matter of fact, they'll seize your land, we call it eminent domain. They'll just seize it. It might not be violent, but it could be. Look at those folks in Texas. They violently seized Waco and took their land. You don't think that they gave it back to them? Shoot, no, they took it. And wickedness and unchastity. You don't think that the, the wickedness is afoot here today? You, I mean, this, you know. So, you know, uh, you know, uh, the quality or state of being sexually immoral or unchaste. Is that not what that means? I mean, come on, man, this stuff is not hard. This is why there's this misty fog all around the earth right now. All around the nation, I should say. This is why everybody has this feeling of of uh, of something. You know, you speak, uh, there's a movie called Something Wicked This Way Comes, but something righteous this way comes. Now, this is this is what we feel. Something righteous this way comes. Change in the air. The the air is sweeter. It's like a it's like a a righteous judgment, an indic a righteous indignation coming. Where people are like, mm -mm, I am indignant of your wickedness. I do not want to be bothered with you. And people go, like, what, 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 what do you mean? And or they go, hey, you know, you know, the same uh, trifling races, same trifling Negroes are now soft spoken. Hey, you know, how you doing? How things? Now we question their agenda because they're too soft. They are Joel Osteen soft. They are trying to persuade us with their soft speak. And we're going, well, wait a minute. I mean, I can discern that you're full of do, do, that none of this stuff that you're saying is true. None of it. None of it. Not one thing that they've ever said is true. It's like all over social media, they're talking about the moon. And I said this before, how in the world, how, how? <laughs> Let's just consider a moment that we did go, that these fools did go to the moon, even though they're foolish nature, so that could never happen. But let's just consider that they did. The audacity of these people to have Nixon make a phone call with a landline to the moon is audacious. Do you not realize? Like that is some that is some that is some bold BS. Ah, these 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 monkeys don't know what they they don't know nothing. Just just pick up the phone, Nixon, and call them with that dial. Uh, uh, no, I'm sorry, with that rotary landline. We call them the moon. We call them these astronauts on the moon. What the hell? They got a long uh, Ma Bell, AT and T, Bell South, whatever phone cord. What kind of Thomas foolery is this? You see what I'm saying? All over the Internet, they're showing how it was all fake. We already knew that was fake. It just didn't sit well in our spirits because no way could these people who have killed, stolen, and destroyed their entire existence. So, and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say this and I'm going to move on. If these people would have gone to the moon, Knowing their character, they would have built or or fashioned together the biggest, largest, brightest American flag that you could look up on the moon and see. This is this is their arrogance and pride. They would have done that. That's how you know they ain't gone to the moon because you can't see no traces of them. Because everywhere else on the earth, they've left their mark. Even in the oceans, left their mark, okay? 
So this, this is this is why all these things are happening, and and even even this last part for some shall leave out some of their own. Right? We got to leave. We got to let, let let them go, and receive in instead from others. It means that the, the, that um, our that your original family you may have to leave and gain another family, which is a family in the nation, the, the true nation of Israel, right? And some complete their own in that of others. So I complete someone else that is in this walk, just like they complete me that's in this walk, so that those may not understand who are upon the earth. Now, we know who's upon the earth, but the others don't. That's because we are not walking with them. We are not um, completing them because we left them out. These are the day incest, so that those may not understand who are upon the earth in those days, that this is the consummation of the times. This is the completion of the times. No one knows nothing of who anyone is on the earth. Shoot, a man is a woman. They don't even know who they are individually, let alone collectively. This is why it's so important. You know, we there's so many apocalyptical writings out there for within our within our people, within our our nation that they have just dismissed it all. But this Baruch one is hitting them in the mouth because at the end of the day, this is this is what's happening. I didn't write this. I'm just reading this. I'm just making matter of fact and commentary upon what I'm reading. I'm not giving opinions. I'm just giving what is read and basing it on current events and historical events. So let me let me get on to this Asaras, okay, because I want to read some of this too, because this is important. Asaras America, home of the Israelites, okay? And this brother, Michael Rourke, I don't know if he's a brother, but the, the 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 language and the information is all pointing to Israel. So I have to say that this is a brother. Um, he wrote this uh, July. Uh, July. He put, it looks like he started in December 26th of 16 and ended in July 27th of 2021, okay? So this is in his book, Origins of the American Indians. Lee Huddleston details European efforts to reconcile the new discoveries which the new discoveries with the accepted religious axioms, especially from the mid 16th century onwards, Spanish scholars first tried to ascribe the origins of the Indians to China, Carthage, the East Indies, the lost continent of Atlantis, and even the biblical Solomonic kingdom of Ophir. The first serious claim that they were descendants of the lost Jewish tribes was made in 1567. So see, this isn't new. They know. In 1567, by the Dutch theologian Jonas Luminous. In latter years, the theory spread to Spanish and Portuguese scholars as well. They identified America with the biblical Asarath, mentioned in the New Testament version of the book of Ezra, 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 which was ascribed to Columbus as well. To Hebrew speakers, Asarath sounds like a jumble of Eretz, Asheret, which means another country, and is mentioned in the Old Testament as a place of banishment for the sinning Jews. Okay, which you know they—that's what they say. You know, this is this is this was a place where we were able to be free of the heathen Gentiles. English and other non-European scholars also tackled the question of the origin of the Native Americans, but the turning point for many of them came, according to Huddleston, in the wake of of testimony offered by a Jew, a Jewish person named Aaron Levi, Levy, who arrived in Amsterdam in 1644. Levy recounted being told by his Indian captors in what is now Ecuador that they were secret Hebrews who would soon drive the Spaniards from their, from their lands. His story was picked up by the preeminent Jewish spiritual leader at the time, Rabbi Manasseh ben Israel, who became the chief proponent of the Indians as Jews theory and wrote a famous book called Hope of Israel about it. Ben Israel 
who was widely respected by Christian scholars, tried to use the discovery of Jews in the new continent in his unsuccessful bids to persuade Oliver Cromwell to allow Jews to return to England 400 years after they were first banished. Now, look at this. Check out that number. 400 years after they were first banished, only when they are in England and France, he reasoned, would Jews be dispersed throughout all the lands, thus enabling the arrival of the Messiah, be he Christian or Jew. So let's back up a minute. Tried to use the discovery of Jews in the new continent in his unsuccessful bids to persuade Oliver Cromwell, we all know who that fellow is, to allow Jews to return to England 400 years after they were first banished. Now, this is the 1600s. All four, so uh, uh, Judah and Israel were to be in, in captivity together, right, the whole house of Israel. So 400 years since they were banished, from where? From where? From Assyria, 400 years. So they were banished, and now... They go into captivity again for another 400 years. So my logic on that really quickly is these people knew who we were. These people knew it. The Most High gave them the opportunity to chastise us for a long time. But they knew that we were Hebrew Israelites here in the Americas. But what they did was they prolonged our suffering. That's why they're going to get tenfold. That's why they're going to get double, double the trouble, right? 400 years initially, they tried to, Assyria, 400 years, uh, 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 the Inquisition, they, they were banished. They, the, the, the Jews were kicked out. These Negro Jews were kicked out of um, uh, the Negro Israelites, were kicked out of all uh, Anglicized areas. History was rewritten. For 400 years. Then another 400 years from 1619 to 400, that's double. So they did unto us double. So wouldn't it be fitting that they also get done unto double? Again, they knew this. They knew who we were. This is nothing new. Like, this this stuff is not hard. Anyway, at, at about the same time, an English cleric named Thomas Thorogood, Jews in America, pro- probabilities that Americans are Jews, which claim that the biblical descent, the biblical descent of Indians based on supposedly shared traits and values with Jews, including, benefit, including belief in one God, laws of purity, and they can put in here, and cannibalism. I don't even understand that. That doesn't even make sense. Thorogood was a supporter of John Eliot the so-called apostle to the Indians who sought to convert Native Americans to Christianity by believing they were Jews. Boosin said prostatizers uh, achieved a twofer. They could save the soul, both of a heathen and a Jew, in one fell swoop. See there? So so they called us heathen, but they knew that we were Jews. So these Christians came over and was like, yo, these are, and you know, it's funny because social media, once again, they all their old movies, their little westerns, they talk about this. Uh, this one in particular had this one white dude on it, and he was talking about that they got to go to, uh, they, that they got an engine problem. And he was like, no, you guys got a Hebrew problem, and we as Christians have to do our, our duty to eradicate them and bring them to, uh, and, and punish them because that's, the, that's what was written. So they knew. This is this is all of what they knew. So uh, where we're supposed to share traits and values, right? Thurgood was a supporter of John Eliot, the so-called apostle to the Indians, who sought to convert Native Americans to Christianity. By believing they were Jews, Gustin said proselytizers achieved a twofer. They could save the soul both of a heathen and a Jew in one fell swoop. She showed me a rare copy held in the museum of a John Eliot Bible printed in the Natick language of Massachusetts. But the Latin letters, the printers, she said, had to stop printing to order more supplies of the letters O, E, and K, which appear in much greater frequency in Natick than in English before they could finish the print. The, now watch this. The American Revolution in 1776 the American Revolution in 1776 did not put an end to the efforts to discover the origins of Native Americans. Now, remember, 
Butho came over in July 4th, 1776, okay? So this American Revolution is a revolution of mind, of ideology, as well as it was to whatever succeed the, 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 to, to not pay taxes, right? On the contrary, the belief that there were descendants of the lost Jewish tribes reached a new peak following the War of 1812. As Dr. Aaron Shalev of Hoffa University recounts in his book, American Zion, with the publication of A Star in the West or a humble attempt to discover the long-lost ten tribes of Israel, preparatory to their return to their beloved city, Jerusalem, by Elias Boudneau. 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 It became a bestseller during the time of the Second Great Awakening, the Protestant revival movement of the early 19th century. Okay? Mordecai Manuel Noah's Mordecai Manuel Noah's famous effort to set up the Jewish homeland era near Niagara Falls in upstate New York was also based on a glorious reunification of the new Jews on the continent with their long lost brethren from the Indian tribes. And the greatest manifestation of the belief that Indians were biblical Hebrews, though technically not from the ten tribes. What? How does that work? How does that work? It is contained in the Book of Mormon, which depicts the 6th century BCE, before Common Era, that's what BCE is, journey of prophet Lehi and his son Nephi from the kingdom of Israel to the new promised land. That BCE is a funny thing. That is BC, that is before Christ. So these people knew who we were. These people messed up the timelines, and they want to act like now we're just black. Nah, we don't know no more. We don't know no more. You niggas is just black. Okay, I mean, you did. This is this is all in the sixteen and fifteen, sixteen, seventeenth century. All of a sudden, in eighteen hundreds, we were slaves. We were just, you know, we we weren't doo doo. I mean, this is this is why they got to pay. This is why they got to pay. Okay. I'm gonna skip the America best. That's Pusey because his, his whatever. In June and November of 1860, respected Licking County, Newark, Ohio surveyor David Warwick unearthed two stones bearing Hebrew inscriptions. The first was a triangular shaped keystone, number, uh, and the second was called the Decalogue stone, encased in a sandstone sarcophagus and accompanied by a small stone bowl, nearly the size of, uh, and shape of Hebrew temple ritual bowls. Among those also was what, well, wait, time out. Let me back up. Ohio. So, hold on, let me, let me just stop there for a second. So, Graham Hancock did his little, his little work on, um, on Netflix, and in it, he was talking about the serpentine, the, the serpent mounds in Ohio. Okay, now there's all these mounds and all this, these are now all these mounds and all these ancient um, sites was all around the Americas. But you know what? They, the Europeans, were able decided they were just going to bulldoze them over and create, you know, shoot, we're just going to bulldoze these sacred sites, and we, we're just going to uh, put up uh, houses. We're going to put up apartments. We're going we're gonna to plant some crops over top of it. This is what they did, okay? Now, Graham Hancock was saying that the serpent mound is a lot older than what they say. They say it's like 300 B.C., okay? Remember, before Christ, before common era is B.C.E., okay? So, in 300 B.C. is when they said that the, that the indigenous population created this. However, however, it was brought to light in his theories that the that there had there were um, tests taken from that site that actually dated it to 12,000 uh, 10,600 10, years ago, which is really roughly around 12,008 years ago because 
the way that they screwed up the dating is that they got they started from there when you know it's one of these big Judah things, right? When uh, one of these big Judah analogies, when he said, you know, all of a sudden here comes these silly heathen Gentiles to the party that they were never invited to. They get to the party and then now everything starts. Now the party starts. So they chose to create time from the moment that they got to the party. But the, but the party had already been going on. All right, so they, because they were never invited or never involved in early civilization, because they were never were they, they were not around. Okay, from in early civilization, they created their time from when they started, where from where they began. Okay, so twelve thousand eight hundred years ago was the last cataclysm, so they say, in on the earth which meant that there was this large, you know, firebomb or comet or meteor or whatever that created a, um, you know, the last ice age, okay? So from from that point forward, Graham Hancock was saying that these that the Serpent Mound was a testament to that time period, okay, by people who were sophisticated enough to build and know astronomy and know astrology because European man wants everybody to believe that that was just hunter gatherers. Oh, these mo- these 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 monkeys were just picking up sticks and you know learning how to hunt. They were just hunter gatherers. They were just you know killing some, eating it, and moving on to the next kill. See, that's how ignorant they are. That's again why they got to pay. It's just how ignorant they are. They they're so freaking ignorant of everything that they have such audacity to act as if they know it all. They got all the freaking answers for everything, but they don't know nothing. Isn't that weird? Funny, I digress. So anyway, and accompanied by a small stone bowl, nearly the size and shape of Hebrew temple ritual bowls. Among those also was what's called the Back Creek Stone which had inscribed on it for Yehuda, one of the 12 tribes pertaining to black people, so-called, right? The inscribed stone was found in an undisturbed Hopewell burial mound along the Little Tennessee River. See, that's why they, they, they were fine with destroying and, and, you know, destroying all these mounds because it held all of our information, our connection to this land see th- this is why this is why it's all coming back to us we're br- our, our souls are remembering who we are because they have done such a great deed against us that our souls are are are, are coming out of our ancestors souls are coming up out of the earth to bring us remembrance hey that creek stone you know, it on it inscribed Yehuda. Well, well, who's Yehuda, and why would they be talking Israel? Why would they be talking Hebrew here in the Americas when the Europeans said, "Oh, well, there was nobody here." Ooh, wink, wink. There was nobody here. They had no civilizations. These people were savages. Matter of fact, they were just he hunter gatherers. It's like what? What? Wait! I thought that I thought that they were just. You know, batshit crazy that they didn't have no history. All of a sudden, all this history is popping up. That's why we have to deal with ourselves. That's why we have to purge our madness from them because our madness is their madness that they have imposed upon us. So once we come up out of their madness, then we get to see who we are, which then allows us to have a choice or make a decision on what we on which way we want to proceed. Okay. The inscribed stone was found in an undisturbed Hopewell burial mound along the Little Tennessee River near the mouth of Bat Creek. Additionally, Hopewell diagnostic artifacts recovered with the stone include bone and wood pieces and two brass bracelets. 
whose metallurgical properties nearly matched those of ancient Hebrews in the Levant, Yashara, portions of the Mediterranean, the Southern Kingdom. Okay? The inscription of the stone was assumed to be Paleo-Cherokee, assumed. They assume when it comes to us, but they know when it comes to them. Now, you've got to understand how they operate. Their operation is very weak. We just were under such a great spell of witchcraft and sorcery that we couldn't see it. But now when we see, now that we see it, we see it's so weak. Like it's, it's, so, it's just piss poor. It really is. It's just weak. The logic is so weak, weak. They have nothing to grasp onto any which way but loose, dating myself again. Any which way but loose. They have no, nothing to grasp onto. Okay? Bear with me a minute. All right. Inscription on the stone was assumed to be Paleo Cherokee and was subsequently published by the Smithsonian in their annual report of the Bureau of Ethnology. Check out the date, 1890 to 1891, on page 392. The keystone inscription translates as the Holy of Holies, the Law of Eliam, the King of the Earth, the word Yahuwah. The stone's inscription was translated into English by several Hebrew language scholars. What was the translation? For the Yahudim or for Yahuda, a clear reference to ancient to a ancient Hebrew tribe. In 1650, Rabbi Menashe ben Israel, chief rabbi of Amsterdam, recorded an incredible story in his book, Mikveh Yisrael. He relates a conversation that he had with a Jewish white Dutch explorer of the Americas. The explorer related how he made contact with the Native Americans, but after trying to communicate with them in every possible European language, he had no success. Being a white Jew, I'm just saying because it's in parentheses, white Jew was his first mate. These two began to talk amongst themselves in Hebrew. To his utter amazement, upon hearing him speak Hebrew to his first mate, the Native American chief responded in kind and stated, Shama Yashara. This is only one of the very numerous instances that seem not only to suggest, but to actually prove that indeed, somehow, in some way, a number of biblical Israelites managed to leave the Holy Land over 2,000 years ago, and by the hand of Yahuwah, found their way to the shores of what today we call the Americas. It was known in Talmudic times that the world was indeed round, and some sages suggest that there is hints to the existence of what today we call the Americas in some of the oldest rabbinic literature. Archaeological evidence to establish this claim is rather significant and widespread. There are numerous archaeological artifacts that have been found throughout the Americas, specifically here in the United States, that are clearly thousands of years old and written in either biblical Hebrew or latter block modern Hebrew script. These include full inscriptions of the Ten Commandments etched in stone and written in Tva Ivrit, Ivrit original pre-Babylonian biblical Hebrew script. There is even one claim made that an ancient pair of Teflon psalms have actually been found buried in an Indian burial ground. All right, we're back to 1700s. In 1775, Englishman James Adair, after living with Native Americans for 40 years, recorded his experiences and published a book about them in London entitled The History of the American Indians. Almost his entire work, is dedicated to document and prove that the Native American tribes of the Central and Southern Territories, soon to become the USA, were definitely of Jewish, were definitely of Israelite origins, and to his day, and to his day, maintain a sizable amount of their ancient Israelite heritage. He goes so far as to say that the tribes that he knew worshipped a single Elohim creator, who they called in their language, but Yehovah, Yehovah, 
no W in Hebrew, Adair's book created quite a stir and was widely read. And watch this. Even President Thomas Jefferson in 1803 was aware of Adair's book. Now, is that, is that, is, ooh, you know, I tremble for my country. Let's read that real quick because they're telling you they all knew. It's like when I read this last night, I was just in shock and awe because I was like, man, oh, man, oh, man, these people are something else. If they ain't demons, I don't know who is. And if Father, please punish them greatly. That's all. That was a, those were the first thoughts to my head, the, the first thoughts. This is Thomas Jefferson, and this is, and, and, and you know, let me let me just see something real quick. Let me just see something. So in se- no, no. So in 1784, Thomas Jefferson wrote, "I wrote. Indeed, I tremble for my country when re- when I reflect that God is just, that His justice cannot sleep forever, that considering numbers, nature, and natural means only, a revolution of the wheel of fortune, an exchange of situation is among possible events that it may become probable." by supernatural interference. Okay. So even President Thomas Jefferson in 1803 was aware of Adair's book. Now, now let me let me let me let me digress for a second. Adair wrote this so between so in 1775 Adair, Englishman James Adair wrote this book chronicling 40 years that he uh, lived um, chronicling the history of the American Indians, okay? So in 1803, Thomas Jefferson was aware of Adair's book and made mention of it in one of his letters to John Adams. Excuse me, Jefferson quotes Adair's belief that all the, all, all, it's an absolute, all the Indians of America to be, de, to be descended from the Hebrews, the same laws, usages, rites, and ceremonies, the same sacrifices, priests, prophets, fasts, and festivals, almost the same religion, and that, and that they all, once again in absolute, spoke Hebrew. All spoke Hebrew. You know, so when they go, when, when they're like, oh, you know, when you hear back in, you know, these Westerns, you know, uh, Jewish, white, Hollywood, would say these movies and the Indians would be like, ow, oh, and blah, 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 blah. You know, in, in actuality, they were also speaking ancient Hebrew. Imagine that. So, again, these people knew who we are. These people know the truth. This is not hard. This is, this is why, this why they're going to have to pay dearly because they knew. They know. We didn't know. And so they tried to keep this from us, and they can't. And now, now that they have, now things have, now that the tables have turned, now that um, the consummation of time is upon them, they don't remember. <laughs> they don't remember. They don't remember, and they don't remember because they don't consider going back and reading their history. Why? Because they think, because to open that dialogue would expose all their heinous acts. You see? So the father's got him a checkmate, just like I said before. Boom, checkmate. Say something, fool. Say something. Do something, fool. Say one thing, fool, and you'll be blown up. Oh, no, uh, 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 CRT, critical race theory, Uh, uh, critical race theory. Theory, fool, are you crazy? These are facts. This is your history. 
But you know what? We can't open up their history. They won't look at their history because their history is marred with not telling the truth about who the people were, marred with lynching, killing, stealing, cutting open, eating, enslaving, legislating, bombing, redlining, I mean, I mean, it's it's a nasty, filthy, degenerate history that they have, but for some, but 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 somehow they proud to be an American. It's like, damn, dude, are you proud to be an American, really? But yet you won't expound on your history. No, no, we ain't talking about that history. But what history are you talking about? Oh, we talking about World War Two when we went over and and beat those Krauts. What? Whatever, man. If that's if you're going to pick and choose, cherry pick your history, then what good are you? Then actually, that shows that you're a bunch of liars. Because matter of fact, we, the Negro, flew the bombers, flew the 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 the, uh, the planes to to shoot down what they call the to shoot down the Ashkenazi. Ooh, I mean the Nazis. Ashkenazis. Oop, I mean the Nazis. Okay? So save it. Miss me with all of the history talk that they don't want to talk. Miss me with the non-history talk because we need to talk about their history. And I'm saying when I was like, Father, I got to, have, I, I got to know. I, I mean, I need more. I need some evidence. I need to know. He was like, there you go. And, and this this is an article. This is a this is an article this man put together. And I mean, it goes. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep. It, it, the next the next part of this goes into. Um, the Assyrians, uh, the, uh, I'll read this part. The Japanese name Saki is but a step away from Saka. There are many strange customs of unknown origin in Japan that can only be explained by recognizing that some from the East Jordan tribes of Manasseh, 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 Reuben, and Gad, Manasseh being preeminent, made their way to that far eastern island while their cousins headed west to populate northwest Europe and the far western island of Britain. Some of these migrations were undertaken all the way into the 17th century when in the final migration, some from the tribe of Manasseh sailed the North Atlantic to Plymouth to fulfill Isaiah 49 and 20. Let's go to Isaiah 49 and 20. The children which thou shalt have after thou hast lost the other shall say again in thine ears, the place is too straight for me. Give give place to me that I may dwell. Mm-hmm. So, what was which was prophesied to the hegemony of the house of Israel, Ephraim, England. Okay. So this brother did some due diligence. I'm telling you, this is a great article. That's why Michael Rusk, the arsonist America, home of the Israelites, okay? You see, the crux of the whole LT subject is that the names we want we want to look for to trace the Israelites are not the names that historical accounts and archaeological finds give those same folks. To more confuse the issue, large groups of Israelites call themselves by different names. Some of them call themselves the House of Isaac, which is pronounced es- Esau, with the emphasis on the last syllable, Isa. How natural for the Persians to call them the Saka, the Saki in Greek, while the Assyrians called others the House of Omri after the sixth king of Israel. This name sounded like Kumri and was variously pronounced Gumri, Gimri, Gimara, Gama, all of which turned into the Greek Kimari or English word for Sumerians. The Israelites weren't lost. Their name got lost. The fact, coupled with the erroneous search for the Jews' fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies, has held the lost tribe, tribe's teaching in virtual obscurity 
these millennia since 500 B.C. 732-700 B.C., Israel taken in exile by the Assyrians who called them Qumri, later corrupted to Gemaria. Assyria, a major Mesopotamian East Semitic-speaking kingdom, an empire of the ancient Near East, it existed as an independent state from perhaps as early as the 25th century B.C. until its collapse between 612 B.C. and 599 B.C., spanning the early to middle Bronze Age through to the late Iron Age. 710, 590 B.C., Israelites called Gemaria by the Assyrians and Kimari, Sumerians by the Greeks, established a reign of terror in Asia Minor. They finally migrated to Europe to a place which they called Asherath. Okay? And this is Second Andrews thirteen forty through forty four of the Apocrypha. Okay? Now again, this is this is this is their timeline. They finally migrated to Europe to a place they the place which they called Asarath, all right? Asarath, a river in the northwest corner of the Black Sea, and anciently named Thereth, now Sirith. Also, Asar is a corruption of the Hebrew word Eretz, which means another land. Okay, so this is just the recap, okay? On the Lost Luna Stone in New Mexico, in which the native so-called Hispanic tribes and the so-called Native American tribes live, the writings on the stone is ancient Paleo-Hebrew, that proves that the native indigenous peoples of the Americas were the Hebrew Israelites on the transatlantic on the translation of the lost lunis stone it is it is scriptures from the holy bible teaching the commandments of Yahweh. it is mormon doctrine that native americans native american people are the lost tribes of israel we know that right in lost tribes and promised lands the troubled encounters between jews and gentiles in spain provide the foundation for the notion of tainted blood, a concept unique to Western racism. This densely textured book skillfully weaves together themes from literary, literal, lit, literary, 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 and historical sources to explain racist attitudes in the early history of the new world or the old world. It is essentially a prehistory based on the thesis that racism against blacks and Indians is prefigured in the ambiguous image of Jews and Hispanic culture. The saga begins in 1381, 1381 on the island of Majorca, where Abraham Kreskes, Kreskes, a Jew, produced the Catalan Atlantis Atlas presented by Juan of Aragon to Charles VI of France. This world map symbolized the Jewish role in Spanish natural, national culture, as well as its developing push towards colonialism. Shortly thereafter, Jews were excluded from Spain under the Inquisition that produced the intellectual, moral, and emotional justification for racism. However, converted Jews metamorphosed into new Christians continue to play a role in the definition of alien peoples. Their own ambiguous place in Spanish culture, particularly in the New World context produced a short-lived tolerance that was finally crushed by the twin urgencies of conversion and exploitation. During the same period, blacks were identified in Europe, European myth with the powerful black Christian king, Brester John, who represented res- resistance to conversion at the furthest reach of known geography contact with Africa and the burgeoning slave trade were rapidly to destroy well let me read that again during the same period blacks were identified in European myth with the powerful black Christian king Prester John who represented resistance to conversion at the furthest reach of known geography contact with Africa and the burgeoning slave trade were rapid, rapidly to destroy this particular incarnation of the noble savage in the case of both Hispanic and Anglo-Saxon colonization, a model of hatred based on the image of the stranger as a creature reviled and feared was available to be exploited. The early British resistance to racism towards blacks and Indians gave way rapidly to the expediency of colonial economics. And Sanders contends the legacy of notion of notions about blood continues to be felt among the remnants of Native American society and among blacks, so-called. Meanwhile, the Jews, as both dominator and victim, stands for and bears witness to the rise of racism and its historic application. 
Banner's book, Sure to Draw Attention, presents an original and intriguingly developed view of an old historical problem. The Afghans are said by the best are said by the best Persian historians to be descendants from the Jews. They have traditions among themselves of such a descent. That's interesting because, you know, they don't go into any every place. And it's funny, wait a minute, because they talk in here about Iraq and, and I'm not going to read it, Chinese, it goes into Scythian languages, um, the Assyrians, Sumerians, the Celtic expansion, South Russia, um, Man, this is just great knowledge right here. This is just some great knowledge. Uh, but I'm going to finish this part. The Afghans are said by the best Persian historians to be descended from the Jews. They have traditions among themselves of such a descent, and it is even asserted that their families are distinguished by the names of Jewish tribes. Although since their conversion to Islam, they studiously conceal their origin. The Pushtu language has a manifest resemblance to the Chaldaic and a considerable, dis, dis, and a considerable district under their dominate, dominion is called Hazrat and Hazret, which might easily have been changed into the word used by Azret, uh, by Edris, Edris, okay? Let's jump forward here. Ironically, the first official day of Thanksgiving was proclaimed in 1637 by Massachusetts Governor John Winter. He did so to celebrate the safe return of English colony men from Mystic, Connecticut. They massacred 600-700 Pequot, so-called Indians, collectively known as the Lost Ten Tribes, and we identify one of one as being the tribe of Gad. After the English colony ministered to them, they laid down their weapons and accepted Christianity. They were rewarded with a vicious and cowardly slaughter by their new brothers in Christ. This is how the Anglo-European has taken everything by lies and trickery, and it's still going on today. And I read that because it's great information, and it gives us some understanding and gives us some some. Uh, some books to look into that I'm sure now are a million dollars, right? Because they don't want us to know that they already know. They want us to believe that they didn't know anything. You know, even the logic of a Christian, uh, even the logic of this nation being a Christian nation doesn't even make sense because by no stretch of the imagination can or should or would a Another human say to another human, you are not human. Even though I can see that you got two eyes, you got two ears, you got a mouth, your hair is just different, your color is just different, you got two arms, you got two legs, you got five toes, you got five fingers, you, you know, go to the bathroom like us, you got every, all the members like us, you look like us, everything that you do, you do just like us. In the natural, so for somehow or some way, these people under a great sorcery or a great spirit of, as in Jubilees, leading them astray, felt it felt obliged to believe in their heart that somehow we were not human and legislate that. Why is this judgment coming? Because of these things. Why is this sorrow coming? Because of these things. Now, that's just a percentage of the judgment coming for the things that it did to his people. But there's another, I will venture to say there's 33, 33 and a third percentage in the judgment per these three things. One, what they, what they did to the people, 33%. Then they stole the heritage. So they went in and said, ah, you niggas ain't nothing, even though we know you the Jewish people or, or the Hebrew people, the Israelites, the lost tribe. We know that's who you are, but we ain't calling you that. Matter of fact, we're going to kill you and take your heritage. So 33% of heritage they got to be judged for, right? They took their heritage. 
said in 1940, like there, there ain't been no Israel, land of Israel. All of a sudden, 1948, it pops up. Oh, well, you know, I mean, shoot, you know, now Israel's back in the land. Wait, I thought that once Israel goes back in the land, they will, they will stop, they, they will uh, break their plowshares, right? That there won't be war no more. But what, what, what the hell? These people have been killing the Palestinians. They've been at war their entire existence. All of a sudden, 1953, Egypt jumps on the scene, right? How, how is it that Egypt jumps on the scene in 1953? My logic, based on what I've read, my research, and my understanding, is that all of that was over here. All of that was in the Americas, okay? They got over here. It took them from 1500, 1500 to 1611 to get a understanding of the language that they had taken from Jerusalem of the Southern Kingdom. They learned this from who? The Mayans? Mayans? Okay? Since the same Sanskrit was similar, because they're the same people of the same tribe, they learned it. Took them 100 years. They learned it. They went and they created their Bible. King James decided he was going to take out all of the special divine magical knowledge that was given the heritage to Israel solely. He took all that out, left us with the cliff notes. Then the Christians, then the Christians pick it up and they go, you know, this is all about Jesus. Matter of fact, we need to add our own party to this party. And they did. And then when they did that, right, they, they did that. They took that and started killing, stealing, destroying, you know, we know the rest, the, the fourth part. They were given power over the fourth part. They were over here 100 years, and they said, you know, we all going back over there. And matter of fact, what did they bring over here? What did they bring over here? Death and destruction. Lies and trickery. Now, it wasn't them. It, like, like they were not smart enough nor intelligent enough, nor crafty enough to take on such an endeavor. So you know they were being led by demons. They were being led by demons. They were able to come over here because that was the, that was the, that's what was written. The Most High was going to allow to happen. As he wrote down, as he had the angels just write down all the things that they were going to do, which is what they did because now, remember, 1500, they got the information, they learned it, learned, learned how to speak it. 1600s, they started coming back in here and taking over things and, and, and putting in, putting their little colonies around. 1700s, they started coming over and saying this is their land. They start killing, right, moving the Indians out, lying and, and, and cheating them and taking land. 1800s, they start shooting them and killing them indiscriminately, at the same time enslaving so-called Africans. 1900s, they created all this legislation to say, you know what, you niggas can't get nothing out of us. Now, in the 20th century, we're woken up. We're going, wait, wait. We remember now. We remember. Yeah, 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 this was our land. Yeah, that's right. Wait, you people stole this land from my people. And they go, Well no, we don't no, no, no we don't want to hear you. We don't we don't need to hear you. You wrote the book and told us, so why do we need to hear your excuses today? Matter of fact, you guys just go somewhere and kill each other. Go somewhere and die. It's better it it goes back to Job's wife. It's better that you all curse the Most High now and die rather than try to come against his lawn. You might as well go ahead and curse him now and die. And this is where we're at right now. These are harsh words for harsh times. Nobody is worrying about what they're saying. No, matter of fact, nobody cares about what they're saying. Their moral authority has been taken, stripped, 
matter of fact, let's forget to stripped. You know, like when you go, when uh, you know one of these military men do something, these these generals do something, and then then the, 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 the other general just comes up and just strips his his rank. More authority's been stripped from them. That's a, you know, I did a search. Where are what does the Christians say about what 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 did I say here? I said what. I said, first of all, I said, what are the Christian pastors saying about what is going on in the world today? Crickets, nothing. They're talking about uh, Christian uh, CT, some magazine, Christian talk. And then when you look into that, when I went into that to just see what they were saying, they're talking about, uh, you know, oh, well, we got to have Christians in in, um, in India. And da, 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 da. and I'm going, what, is, what the hell are you talking about? Where is it? What, what is it? What about the war? Where's your moral authority? Stripped. You know? Their history is just choking them out right now. Like big smoke is just choking them. <laughs> we don't want to talk about that. <laughs> Good grief. Can't talk about that. <laughs> Shoot, get out of here. Their politics is a laughing stock. It's a mockery. It's a joke. Bumbling Biden. Soft shoeing around, looking in disarray. People got to hold him up, but all he can see is little kids. He just goes to them and touches them. Oh, the little, the, oh, the little children. Their religions are a atrocity. They scared. They running. Cause shoot, they can't be flying. You know, coach. So they flying in their plane, running, people running. Won't they stand and face the music? Nope, won't do it. Why? Because of this Asherah America, because they knew who we were, and they created this false narrative to say we were from Africa. And then you got brothers and sisters running around here talking about Africa, Africa, Africa. And we're like, well, wait, these people were not smart enough, nor could they endure a logistical uh, undertaking as that to move 12 million of us. It's just unheard of. Logically, that does not make sense. What makes sense is, we were already here. Doesn't that make sense? Well, shoot, it, 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 this tells you that these people were already here. They only they might have killed some of us. Some of us might have killed killed uh, died from um, from uh, disease, but they didn't kill all of us. They enslaved the rest. Did they bring some Africans over here? I doubt it. Because Africans don't, Hamites don't look like us. I mean, we can see that from the World Cup. You look at the African nations, the Senegalese, the, uh, the the Cameroonians. Some of them do, but some of them don't. And we ain't all the same. That's the same as saying, all oh, you Europeans look alike. Shoot, you Italians look like Germans. You Germans look like Swedes. You Swedes look like Europe, uh, 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 English. You English look like French. They lose their stupid minds over them us uh, saying that. But yet the audacity is, ah, you niggas all look alike. So then it was easy for us, for or rather for them, to say to us that we were from Africa. Well, again, our ancestors are rising up saying, no, we are not from Africa, and all those people, all these brothers and sisters that's running around here talking crap about all we, we are all from Africa, they are creating their own demise. Why? Because they are coveting lands that are not theirs. We don't own Africa. We are, This is ours here. And if we do have places in Africa, it ain't ours right now. But what is ours right now is this land that we're on today. This is ours. This is ours. Well, I'm over a couple minutes. I don't want to go 
too, too long. I want to say this. I'm going to I'm going to end with Brother Jeremiah, and I will bid you all farewell, peace and shalom. After this, because again, this is the good news. This is how we know that it, that uh, time is on our side and not theirs. Okay. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. For lo, the days come, saith saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people, Israel and Judah, saith the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it is where we are. And these are the words the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah, two kingdoms. For thus saith the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask ye now, and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins, as a woman in travail? And all faces are turned into paleness. Alas! For that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he, Jacob, shall be saved out of it. For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck, and will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. That not what happened in all praises. But they shall serve their Lord their God, and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith the Lord. Neither be dismayed, O Israel. For lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. And you know the rest. I'm not even going to read the rest, because I want to say this. Before Christ. The Europeans' time frame, B.C., because B.C. is the English abbreviation for before Christ, it is sometimes incorrectly concluded that A.D. means after death, i.e. after death of Jesus, okay? When we look at this, A.D. stands for Anno Domini. Latin for in the year of our Lord, while B.C. stands for before Christ, okay? Okay, just remember that. So the time periods that they have, like 100 B.C., okay, they're saying before Christ. So so this is why it's so This is why they're just stupid people. They're just dumb. Like, it's just ignorant. Their whole conceptualized conception of time is just ignorant. Before Christ, their time starts 100 B.C., before Christ. Okay, this is Rome. So you ask the question, what prophets were before Christ? Among these prophets were Moses, Abraham, Zeno, Zenoch, Isaiah, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lehi, and Nephi. And there's others. There's others. Don't want to acknowledge them. This is why they wrote their New Testament, you see? They don't want to start their time before they came to the party. Because matter of fact, it's ignorant, stupid, and dumb, foolish. It's all the negative words that I can even, and some coarse curse words, too, 
to say this one point. How in the Phil Florin, Phil Florin, Phil Florin, okay, can you time before Christ and end it after his death as if this man, our brethren, our brethren, died of old age, considering you killed him? So why, what the hell? Like, come on. So you're going to start your time after you've killed, you're going to start your time because you want to say, oh, you want to reverence him in his youth. Then you want to kill him, and then you want to reverence him in his death, in his murder. This is, these, these people are sick. Like, this is a sick world. Like, it's always been sick. It was sick from the beginning. But I'm not going to hold you up. These are just thoughts from the mind of a Israelite who has no qualms in saying who he is and the confidence of Job to stand the tests and the wiles of these silly, foolish devils that are running in and out of these Anglo-Saxon, European, foolish nation people. With that, all praises to the Most High. Sorry it went long, but it's just what it is tonight. Where, excuse me, where I am, where my mind is, because I can go on and on, but I'm not going to be like the mother brothers that want to just uh, pontificate. Just something to talk about, something to think about. And much love to the nation. Stay strong, endure, and persevere. All praises to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Shalom.